Hi guys, this is Simeon with my brother Tim from Swedish Homestead. Hi guys. Like promised, we're gonna show you some helpful tips and tricks with ratchet straps and my brother is the one who's gonna do this. So ratchet straps are very handy tools. They're designed to secure loads, but you can also use them for some other applications. But today I want to give you some tips and advice. Uh, so I hope you get something out of this. There's this design where you have the ratchet and then just a strap on it and it's made to create a loop which just feed the end into the ratchet. Then there's this design that is made up out of two parts. The ratchet part and the strap and they each have a hook. So you hook them to the trailer for example Strap this over the load and then you tighten it. This small one, it's very cheap and stretchy. I don't care for those. There's smaller ones that are better quality. And this one, where one side has this plaque pattern on it and the other side is completely orange, it helps you to distinguish which side you're using and uh, helps you to turn it the right way so you don't twist it. This webbing material is very strong, but there are people that think they can do almost anything with a ratchet strap. And I think that there is applications where you should not use one, but rather a good, good piece of rope. And also you have to be mindful of the fact that when you use webbing, if you twist it and, and bend it and fold it like this, you decrease the strength. It's the strongest when it's just flat like that and the load is evenly spread over the webbing. Good trailer will have attachment points like eyelets that you can hook them into or this one has these hooks down here, which is put the hook on and you go around. Very handy. However, sometimes you might not have those available and you'll have to improvise. What I've seen people do is take the strap, put the hook around uh, an object like for example this and f just feed this end through. And the problem with that is that if you tighten this, you pull the webbing into this little gap here, you tear the webbing and or you, you run a high risk of tearing the webbing plus it's going to be very difficult to get it out of there after you're done. But there's better ways to do that. One way is just to, to stop right here and then just take a wrap or maybe even a couple of wraps around the hook like this and it will not slide down and you will not pull it into that little crack. However, we've bent the webbing and it's not as strong anymore as it is normally. There's one other way you can do this, by just putting it around, creating a little bite in the strap, feeding that through and pulling this little loop that you created over the hook. And then you've essentially done the same thing, um, but you're loading the hook a little bit funny. So this is not the strongest way to do it. The best thing is you have is if you have a hook or an eyelet on your trailer to hook it onto. When it comes to picking the right size strap for your application, keep in mind if you're securing a load that it's not just the weight of the load itself that you need to consider, but the fact that if you would break, that this certain weight will develop a much higher force than its own weight. When it comes to running the strap over your load, Try to avoid bunching it up like that if you can. However, you just take one turn. So it's just twisted one time here. That doesn't hurt anything. It actually helps because it's less likely to shake and vibrate from the wind when you're driving, which can even lead to a tear in severe cases. If it's just doing that over an edge or something. This eliminates the vibrating and the noise when you're driving. If you don't have a hook on your trailer to attach the ratchet part to, you just go around an object like this and hook it onto itself like that. Now I'm gonna show you, in my opinion, the best way to feed the webbing through the ratchet. There's different ways people do it. I see some people open the ratchet like this feed it through so it comes out like that and then they have to somehow hold this up like that 
and they start tightening. And when they start tightening, there's always a, a good amount of slack in here still that you first have to get rid of through tightening. The way I like to do it, you start out with the slot being at a 90 degree angle to the ratchet, like this. And you take the end, feed it straight through, comes out on the other side, hook your ratchet. And now I can hold this tight with one hand. And I can pull out all, all the slack that I can already. It keeps the ratchet in place for me to just come with my other hand and tighten it. And it helps me with pre-tensioning as well, because I've created mechanical advantage. If there was no friction here and I pull parallel, it would be two to one, meaning I pull twice the force. So then you always end up, or in most cases, you end up with excess webbing here that you have to tie off in some way so it doesn't fly all over the place when you're driving. And the best way, I think, in this case, you know, you fold it double, like that, and with doubled webbing you tie a simple knot around the tightened strap. And just pull it down like this, very clean, very easy, stays in place nicely. Had it been much longer I could have gone over, fed it through the hook on the other side and brought it back or something like that. Now people have different preferences on how to store their straps. Some people just throw them loosely into a bucket and there's this other method how you roll it up, triple R method. I learned that from a recent Swedish Homestead video. I like to roll up my straps like this. You don't start rolling at the very end because it will leave the end curled up like this and it's gonna make it hard to feed through your ratchet the next time. So you start a bit in, and just bend it, and then you roll it up and you want to have the hook uh, not in the center of the coil but on the outside. We end up with this and the next time I need my ratchet strap and I have a higher load I can hold on to the hook, throw the rest over the load. And because the hook is on my side I don't knock my co-worker silly with it or put a dent into my truck or something like that. You can just throw the soft webbing over like that. I also like to put the ratchet on the passenger side of the vehicle so that if I have to get out and tighten it again I don't have to stand in traffic. If I have to pull over on the side of the road I can stand on the safe side and then make adjustments. That's some insight on how to use a ratchet strap. Some of it is very basic and you might already know it, but I hope that for some of you there was some useful information in there. Um, and to learn about the triple R way to roll up a ratchet strap, it's linked right up here. Hope you enjoyed this and thanks for watching.